Good afternoon everyone, um, welcome to Live Lunch. My name's Ollie Wright and um, today I'm going to be talking about uh, photography and some tips that I've learned over the past few years um, working on various new jobs. And um, there's, uh, there's 10 tips in total. Um, here we have the first four. I think it's probably time for two or three this lunchtime, so if you like them, like what you see, please do leave some comments on the website and um, I would love to come back and then take you through the rest. So without further ado, let's dive in. Um, first of all, we're going to look at something which is called um, the rule of two thirds. It's also commonly known as the uh, golden ratio in uh, other sort of art circles as well as, as photography. And um, the reason I've picked this one first is because Actually, if you apply this rule to pictures, scientifically and bio biologically, um, you should find that people enjoy um, what they see. Um, this is a rule that's actually based on an ancient uh, mathematical um, principle um, and also uh, neurological and biological research in the way that the human brain interprets and digests information. And for some strange reason, but lucky reason for photographers, if you split things into three parts um, and you position your objects in one of those third areas, um, and I'll show you some examples um, in a minute, um, it just makes humans happy when they look at a picture. So if you apply this one, you should get a happy audience. So it's actually very simple. Um, if you are out on a location or a holiday, this was a, a rafting uh, trip, in Jamaica in the jungle and I wanted to capture the, the beautiful colour of the guy's t-shirt and his, and his smiley face. Um, so to use um, the rule of thirds to um, sort of convey this um, in an sort of interesting way, um, I looked at putting two thirds of the background here and then as you can see the subject is over there um, in one third of the, one third of the picture. Um, so, I mean, it's just, it's, it's just a different way than you can imagine. If you want to take a picture of him, you could zoom straight in on his face and you still get the character. But by having that area here, you can sort of put him in context, you know where he is, and it's, it's, it's balanced. Um, the second one um, is applying the rule of two thirds, but also with, with contrast. So we've got a um, deep, solid green background here, um, and the guy's wearing a light white t shirt. So I waited till we passed the, the closure of trees. Put the guy in one third of the, the picture so he's got some sort of room to read in the picture, but then the white of his t shirt contrasted nicely to the, to the green. Um, before that, we were going through um, the training seasons, we were going through the sky and the clouds were all sort of grey and white and similar colours, so you can imagine how he would have blended in, but here it's, it's really easy to, to see what I was hoping people would want to look at. Um, again, one third subject, two thirds space. Um, so, just going through this one here, um, you uh, can also make the subject dominate. So what we just looked at was how if you have you know, a nice bit of space, you've got area for the, you know, uh, you know, for the photo to read and a little bit of uh, telling you where to focus on. Um, alternatively, you can put the subject in um, two thirds of the area and then give um, a third of space. And as you can see, this, this sort of adds more, more drama um, this, this person is now sort of, you know, in, in full frame in the photo, um, whereas here it's a bit of a more relaxed composition. So two thirds uh, subject, one third space. Um, but don't worry, I said it was a mathematical principle. Um, however, it doesn't mean you have to follow it uh, exactly to uh, to the rules of, of science. So you know, you've got roughly here two thirds of the subject in the third in the third space. Um, and you know, I've got the, the horizon here, you've got the, the sea, sort of two thirds along the bottom and the sky third along the top. So when you look at look at the more thirds you add, um, apparently, and um, I'll, I'll show you an example at the end, um, the, the happier people should be when they when they look at your pictures. So we've got two thirds there and then we've also got two thirds there. Um, again, this is sort of quite a quite an obvious example, but just putting the canoes in the bottom, you can see it makes this um, sort of kind of symmetrical uh, composition of the, of the boats come out and just adds a pattern to what otherwise could have just been a, you know, a picture of a, of a canoe. Um, um, also, uh, when uh, we look at pictures and there's a human being in them, we tend to look at them in the eyes just the same way that we do when we meet a human in real life. So when you're composing your photo, um, it's always a good idea to put the eyes 
approximately um, a third into the picture, either at the top, or it could be at the side, wherever it is, we just think about where the eyes are, and um, that also enables people to be drawn naturally to, to, to make a connection with the person they're looking at. If you make a connection with them, then you enjoy the picture a little bit, a little bit more. Um, you can use props to really sort of dramatise this uh, rule of thirds. So here we've got a sort of like a, a bungee line that's going down. I'll use that just to, to frame things. So it kind of draws your eye to the corner. You know, you know where you're supposed to be looking. Um, again, I use the guy's um, bamboo paddle that's going down the river um, to, to clearly split the photo into into two areas. So you know, sometimes if you've got a busy situation and you want to capture um, some activity in it but you know there's 10 things that people are going to be looking at when they see the picture. Try and get something like you know, a physical barrier somewhere in, in the picture to, to sort of point people's direction um, into that section of the, section of the picture. So, um, I mean, those, those pictures are quite straightforward to illustrate this rule of thirds. Um, and, um, you know, what, probably, the, probably the best thing to do to, to learn sort of more about it is to go onto a website like Flickr. Um, you go through lots and lots of different pictures, and as you go through them, just sort of evaluate you know, which one did I think was particularly good, and sort of put them in a little collection. And you might find um, that the ones where you split the action into one third and two thirds um, are the ones, that, the ones that you prefer. But instead of just taking my word for it, I've got this sort of one example here, which I think um, hopefully uh, conveys that this is a technique well worth following. So we've got this um, picture of a, of a lovable pup. It's uh, running through the snow, you can see his eyes very clearly, his, you know, his tongue's out, you can tell it's a bit of action, you can get a bit of emotion going. There's also some woodland in the back, so you know that you know, he's, he's outdoors, you can see a bit of blue sky, so you can tell it's a nice day. So, you know, it's a, it's a really good picture, it's, it's a really nice picture of a, of a dog running. However, if you then look at that shot of exactly the same dog, um, <clears throat> and start to think about you know, why that has more, more impact, I think it does, hope you <laughs> agree. Um, you start to see all, all sorts of thirds coming into play. So you've got this big white area here, which is basically letting the brain and the eye relax so that there's not too much busyness drawing attention away from, from your main subject. Um, it also draws a line, you know, um, letting you know where you're supposed to look. Um, lo and behold, the eyes of the dog are one third along the picture. Um, again, it makes it easy and restful for a human being to, to pick out the detail. Um, and you see that we have you know, one third of busyness up at the top. You know, there's a lot of clutter going on here. Um, but it, it gives context that you know, if you cut the photo off and, and add just this bit showing, you see that there's so much busyness that the dog kind of gets lost a bit in, in all the clutter. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that, that's the rule of thirds, quickly explained. I hope that made sense. My first live performance on a live lunch, and um, I've enjoyed it. I hope you have too. Um, questions? So please pop them into the comments box. Um, I'm online most of the time, so I will fire things back. And you know, it would also be good to have a debate if you agree or disagree with the um, rule of thirds, and we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll all share some pics. And I've got a question. question. So I've got a new SLR for Christmas. What's good sort of settings if I was going to take it into a party? Like if I can just set it up on a bunch of basic modes. So if I'm going to take it to a party, I'm taking my bag and just fire and forget what's a good sort of basic setting to put it on. Um, so yeah, so um, somewhere as a tip, if you're at a party, set your ISO to 1600, 3200 above. Um, put it on an aperture setting if, if you like to get a nice depth of the field and then just go and party and whenever you see something, click away. You should get beautiful, rich, saturated, atmospheric shots. Um, cool, well thank, thanks for the question Jason, hope that made sense. And thank you everyone, uh, this has been Ollie Wright on Live Lunch. See you again soon.